Uh, we're going to go in uh, to do horizon map and you go on the static menu and the menu called static horizons is where we do all the, the mapping for horizon layer picking. Uh, you choose whatever folder you want to work on and then you hit the button called detect draw horizon. And here's a small project that we have. Now, the way there's a lot of buttons in here, we're not going to get to all the buttons, but we're going to show you the major features in this menu. Um, normally, we have to choose horizon number one, which would be the ground surface. And for this particular data set where the, the data was recorded right on the ground, the antenna was on the ground, uh, the, the ground surface is right at the top. So we'd have sample start, it would go from three to three and uh, on horizon one. We just auto detect that. And you can see we set the surface up here. But you can imagine if we had a, a drone survey or, or, or the elevation was changing on the antenna off the ground, we might have a, a variable surface. So horizon one can also be a variable surface. And then we would, uh, we have, once you set that, we probably wanna run this in batch or just run that in batch. Okay, so we just ran it in batch on all the profiles in this project. Uh, the next step is to, let's say we wanna detect this horizon there. We go to horizon number two, and then uh, we set a sample start and a sample end. Right now it's set to 170 and 300. If we hit this uh, button here called horizontal search bars, it can say that we're searching in just in that location of the radar grid. Okay, we can set it to work on the peak plus response of the pulse or the peak minus. Right now it's set to the peak plus, and we'll just run an auto detect on it right here. And you can see it did a, a reasonable job on detecting uh, the horizon here, but there are a few areas where it just, it, it lost the horizon, it could be missing. Uh, we have what's called a moving filter and you can uh, set a filter length. Right now it's set here to like 11 and you could put a, a filter length that would take the moving average and reset uh, anything that went above a threshold of one sample, would set it back to this moving average. So if we run that, we could do something like that. And that looks like it has a nice detection uh, on there. And if you put a, a sample in here that's really long, like let's say I made it too long, and I don't detect, it might make it too flat. So you have to trade off smoothness with the detail in, uh, in the profile. So I'm just gonna go back and put it on 11. Okay, so once uh, you have that set, uh, we can run this in batch on all the profiles. So I'm just gonna do that now. And then we'll go back and, and look at the, the second radar gram here. And here you can see that we have a, a horizon where it's not perfectly continuous. Uh, so we can either come in here and edit it. So there's a way to edit it. You could come in here and say, I want to edit it. And if you do that, uh, you can move this down here. Now, your pen resolution is actually decided by this thing called length. Uh, right now, it's set to 50 scans, so it's doing a, a kind of a a large swath of data. Let's say you want to have more detail when you're editing it. Let's say if I put it down to five and then I come here, you have a lot more uh, uh, detail that you can put into the profile. So it's your trade-off of what kind of resolution you want to put in into your profile. Okay. I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it at like 15 and then just edit this right here. And then uh, let's say I like that. Um, okay. You could do that, but there's areas where we don't even have a horizon. So what you could do is you can actually come back here and erase locations on that horizon. So you can say edit, erase, and then you can take out areas that where you don't have data. Okay, you could do something like that. Okay. Um, so that's another way to describe that horizon. And down below is actually the, the, the layering model. Now notice in the horizon menu, you have a, a velocity, so each layer is going to have its own velocity, and that and that will describe the actual geologic map down below here. Let me go back to the uh, the first profile here, and let's say we wanted to detect um, this this third uh, horizon down here. So I would come over here and put this on horizon number three, and then I'm going to just I'm going to show up that filter and just try to detect it right here. Put that at zero, and then, so right now, it uh, didn't do such a great job right there, so we could put on that filter and see what it does. So it didn't do such a fantastic job. It missed it because it got a little bit weak over here, and we had some reflections come down here. I can try the peak minus response, which would be the black part of the pulse, and here it, it found that over this range of the data, 
that yeah, it got stronger down here. So uh, this one's a little trade-off. Well, let's say I wanted to just detect the white. So I'm gonna go back and detect the white. Uh, and I can edit that, but let's say I want, even though I'm detecting the white, but I want to move up the horizon to uh, be launched at the, at the beginning of the, the black or the beginning of the, the initial part of the pulse. I can actually come over here and put in a value and detect it. And it'll move it up that number of samples. Let me go back down to like 30. Okay. And then let's say I wanted to edit that. I would just come over here and uh, let me put a longer length here to make it a little bit quicker, save some time. So I could come over here and edit it. And we're just going to draw that quick. And then I would save and edit it. Okay. But before you would come in here and edit uh, each one, you'd actually come and run this in batch. So I'm going to run this in batch right now on all the profiles. Okay. And without having to go back and, well, let's say I just want to edit one. I just edit the first one uh, here. And uh, I'll redraw it and we'll just resave that. Okay. okay, we save that. Let's say that's good enough. Okay, so we have uh, these um, uh, three layers. Just to let you know, in GPR slides, you can actually detect up to 15 layers and uh, assign all the different velocities here. Just to show you that these velocities are active, let's say I were to in increase the velocity here to like just a, a crazy velocity of 20 centimeters per nanosecond and redraw that, you'll see that this layer got a lot thicker. So this is the actual geologic model. And this is uh, the actual, just the picking on top of the radiograms. I'm gonna go back and put this to what it uh, really is and about 11 centimeters per nanosecond. Okay, so once we have that taken care of, we can actually now compile these horizons and get them into 3D. So in the previous menu, we come over here and we compile horizon number two. And um, we don't compile horizon number one because horizon number one is just the ground surface. But what the software does, is if you only have two horizons at a, on a project, which the horizon one is the surface and then some subsurface, the software will actually copy horizon number two to horizon number one for convenience because otherwise it's just zero. But I'm just gonna compile this. And GPR Slice compiles a lot of different data. And there's a bunch of different files and I'll just briefly explain them. Horizon uh, file is the actual sample number of the pulse that we detected, okay? And then horizon depth is the actual depth of that horizon based on your velocity model that we had set, okay? So if you, if you came in and changed your velocity, you, you don't actually have to re-detect re anything. You just put in a different velocity and compile. Uh, horizon elevation is the actual elevation. And then the thickness uh, would be the thickness of that horizon. When you're just looking at the second horizon, the thickness is the same as the depth. But if you can imagine, if you're looking at the thickness between the second and third horizon, the, third, her, uh, the thickness would be just the, the, the thickness between the second and third. So... And we also compiled the amplitude and there's an export file, which you can actually put into other software and you have all this data in, in one file. And uh, we also had a, a request uh, over the years where that data that's compiled is on every scan in the profile. So you can imagine if you have a 50,000 scan profile, you have a big ASCII file. There's an option here to actually re-export the data to a, a linear length on the ground, like one meter or whatever. Uh, and, and it'll make another export file for you and it'll reduce the data, but it'll also give you some statistics. And we'll show you that a little bit later. Right now we, we wanted to, we compiled Horizon 2 and now we want to grid Horizon 2. I'm not going to compile Horizon 3 at the same time here. And there's Horizon 3. And then we're going to go grid the horizons here. And then we got um, Horizon, um, well, we got three slices and we'll, I should, we'll shut off multi-thread and we'll just let these run. And you'll note that when horizon number one comes up, it's gonna look identical to horizon two, uh, simply because uh, for convenience, we copy horizon two to horizon one. Okay, and there's horizon three, and now it's working on horizon three. Okay. Okay, so from here, uh, we can go into OpenGL and look at these data. So we'll maximize that. We'll put up a profile. And we'll make it a little bit larger. Okay. 
And then I'm gonna store that to the screen. Then we come over to here and we can choose Horizon 2. And there's three buttons here. Um, horizon, if you hit H1, it'll just give you the color palette that you have for the horizon. I'll just hit that. And that shows you the color palette that you have assigned in the options menu. There's also an option to put on a net, which uh, if you choose different densities, you can get a different density of net plot over there as well. And then the H2 allows you to have a solid color. And the solid color will take the, between one and 255, 256 color values here. So on color 78, uh, if we hit that, it'll create a solid um, uh, horizon and has a light switch on. So lighting is actually a, being applied to that data. And if you shut it off, it doesn't look very good if you're using the, um, a single color for that. Uh, so I, I can leave that on there. I'm gonna go back to H2 here uh, and then I'll store that. And then if we wanna put on the third horizon, we come down to the third horizon and then we hit the, uh, I'll use a, just a net plot. And there's the third horizon for us there. Okay, um, what I'd like to do is show you another feature in the software. And uh, what we'll do is we're gonna to go to a, a, a different project real briefly. And uh, that would be Kasachi uh, Tilt, I think. Yeah, let's go there. Um, there's, a, there's a feature in GPR Slice uh, where once we have a horizon, we can actually make that horizon flat. And uh, many years ago, uh, we used to work on burial mounds in Japan. And let me just open up a, a PowerPoint here real quickly for us. Uh, we used to work on burial mounds in Japan and some of the contour maps were very low resolution. We only had one or two meter contours. And we knew at this particular site that we were working in that there was a, a, a flat layer of volcanic ash. And so we could actually just detect that uh, flat layer and then do what's called a horizon correction to make that flat. And we, can, we could actually get closer to topography than we could in digitizing these old maps. This is data taken back uh, 25 years ago. Um, so here's the, this particular data. So you just, you choose your horizon here and then you run this option here called horizon correction. And I'll just have to scroll down to show you that there. So what that does is it takes whatever horizon is active and makes that horizon flat in the data. Okay. Uh, there's one other uh, feature I'd like to, to show you. And I'm gonna go um, to another project. We're back to the other project here, horizon. And it's called the depth radar gram. So we're gonna go back over to here. And, um, you know, all our radar grams are recorded in time and they're not recorded in, in depth. So this axis is really time. Often you'll see, and we do it as well in GPR Slice, we actually put a, a time uh, labeling on the left side or a depth labeling on the left side, but that's just apparent depth. If you have multiple velocities on different intervals or interval layers layering here, then this depth axis doesn't really mean anything. And you can't just put it in one location. You'd have to put it in all the locations because the horizons are variable, but we have what's called a depth radar gram. And what that does is it adjusts the radar gram to match the, the horizon thicknesses and the velocities. So we, if you hit depth, okay. And if we go down here, so this is a radar gram that's actually co uh, corrected in, from time into depth. So if you notice these layers are no, there's, there's actually the bottom layer is actually, uh, it's, it's variable, it's not flat. So in this particular data, which is the info depth radar gram, the time, there's no time in this. This has all been converted to depth. So having a time scale wouldn't mean anything. Uh, you have options where you can run uh, some of these features in batch and actually adjust all your radar grams uh, to actual depth. Okay, I wanna show one more project when it comes to horizon. And um, just to show you what you can do. And this is a drone survey, drone bathymetry. And uh, this is collected on a, a frozen lake in, in Sweden. And um, this, was the, this is where the, the drone was going very close to shore and then going out towards the, the frozen lake, coming back to shore. And we'll show you the track in a minute. So uh, this is the actual uh, detection. And we had to edit it a little bit with the mouse. And then we're gonna go here to OpenGL. And let's see if we can recover, recall that the data set. So here's the actual site here. 
And we can actually put on the actual track of the data. And that's all tracks. So that's the actual track, what they programmed here. And they programmed it to uh, fly to level elevation. And from there, we actually uh, compiled the, the bathymetry or uh, the horizon. And that would be horizon two. And there's the actual bathymetry of that, um, uh, of this frozen lake. It's, it's very unique that, you know, they were flying at a high elevation, but radar waves are just so unique that if you have frozen fresh water, you can get radar waves through the frozen lake and actually get down to, to the bathymetry on the bottom of the lake and actually get returns that you can uh, process and do bathymetry from, from a drone. Okay, um, that's all we want to talk about Horizon. And next, we'll be talking about topographic adjustments in GPR Slice software.